Following the release of Operation Doomsday, Doom shifted his focus more towards production with his Special Herbs tapes. Throughout this time, however, there was a monstrous rumbling that persisted. This was the rumblings of a monster that we've become familiar with on Operation Doomsday, King Ghidorah. Welcome to the Book of Doom Chapter 4, where we'll be going through the first and only full-length project sent down from the three-headed kaiju himself, King Ghidorah. Follow the light. The light is your guide. King Ghidorah, as we've discussed in previous chapters, is Doom's take on the three-headed monster of the Godzilla universe. Ghidorah itself doesn't rap because it's a monster and it, we just can't understand the screeching, but instead acts as a ventriloquist where Doom is the ventriloquist dummy. According to Doom, Ghidorah sends down these transmissions from wherever it, it is as a means to communicate via Doom direction of Gidra is like okay he's not even from the earth you know what I'm saying out of space you know and he more challenge he channels the information to doom in order for doom to produce and whatnot so doom kind of he gets the message from Gidra. with this project doom took a slightly different approach when compared to most of his other projects here he emphasizes that this album is Ghidorah's take on humanity and acts as a reflection of what was going on around that time. He basically combined all the ideas that he and the featured artists had with samples from older Godzilla films, allowing this project to flow well from one song to the next. This is most well done on the track Fastlane with Biolante, aka Curious, where the track ended with an introduction to Gigan, who's the featured artists on the next track, Crazy World. Look out there. Those two space monsters, the one with the three heads, is King Ghidorah. And that one's Geiger. We're controlling them. With this project, Doom went as far as to essentially be a featured artist on his own album. There's really only four or five tracks where we get a Doom verse. But that's okay because most of the features that we got here are from the Monster Island Czars. The Monster Island Czars, like I've mentioned in the past, are essentially a collective of New York rappers that Doom would often collaborate with that also happened to take on monikers of Godzilla universe monsters, just like Doom. It actually makes a lot of sense at this point for Doom to take more of a backseat to the rapping because he was really focusing in on his special herbs beat tapes. That combined with the fact that there probably weren't too many people familiar with King Ghidorah, or at least the idea of King Ghidorah being Doom, Doom was really just able to do whatever he wanted to do with this project, since it wasn't labeled an MF Doom project specifically. Take Me To Your Leader also carries on Doom's tradition of creating dialogue via samples. Instead of sampling old cartoons though, this time he sampled dialogue from Godzilla films and Star Trek as well as, you know, just random others like he is one to do. The album starts off with the track Phasers, which acts as a really solid introduction to both the album and Ghidorah itself. The whole verse is just talking about what Ghidorah is and what it does. This verse accompanied by the production really helps to create this image of Doom being the translator for Ghidorah in a Godzilla film. There's also a line where he says, which while being in reference to the three finger ring that Subrock used to wear, it also adds to the idea that this project as a whole is king is controlled by King Ghidorah itself. Ghidorah here is the ringleader and is telling everyone involved with this album what to do and what to talk about. This also goes into the idea that this album really is just Ghidorah's views on humanity since Ghidorah is the one that's doing all of this. Doom's narration continues on with Fastlane where Biolante slash Curious talks about the state of hip-hop at that time, which honestly isn't too dissimilar from today. There's people that just don't take hip-hop seriously as a form of art, and that's unfortunately gonna be the case for some time, I feel. Then with Crazy World, we hear about the life and times of a pimp from Gigan, which is just an interesting take. We get more of a story with the skit Monster Zero, where many of the samples, again, are from Godzilla films, where Earth has essentially accepted that Ghidorah is gonna be ruling over them. It also goes more into 
Ghidorah's backstory, where we learn that on Planet X, Ghidorah is called Monster Zero, and that all monsters are numbered on Planet X rather than having actual names. Like, that's just an Earth thing, apparently. Hey, look. It's King Ghidorah. Yes, indeed. On Earth, you gave this terrifying monster the name of Ghidorah. Everything is numbered here. The monster is zero. Alongside this, towards the end of the track, we get a reference to Victor Von Doom, aka Doctor Doom, from Marvel Comics. Like, not, not MF Doom, Doctor Doom. And this is given to us with a brief aside to his origin story, which is interesting to include. And I feel like it could potentially be seen as an introduction to Victor Von, the other alter ego slash persona of MF Doom. Timeline-wise, it does make sense, though, because Vaudeville and Villain which is the first Victor Vaughn album, was the next release from Doom later on in 2003. We don't hear from Doom slash Ghidorah again on the album until the track No Snakes Alive, where we get a really interesting beat filled with tempo changes that everyone on the track just slides on so well. One of the few tracks without a Monster Island Czar member is Antimatter, which features Mr. Fantastic. For years, well, really since this track came out, I'd say, people have been wondering who exactly Mr. Fantastic is. We still don't know, and I don't expect us to ever find out. But his voice and inclusion here is just perfect. This track holds a special place in my heart because it was the first time that I realized that other rappers use Doom's beats. Two examples that I can think of, at least that I remember vividly at that time, are RZA's Can't Stop Me Now and Nas's You Can't Stop Us Now which is basically the same thing as the chorus now that I think about it. I think the reason that it stuck out to me so much is that around the f time I first listened to this album, I was really exploring hip hop and all the intricacies of it. I don't think it had even occurred to me at the time that Doom was a producer here. This was right around the time that mixtapes were really popping off and the only time I had really heard another rapper rap on someone else's beat was when it was for a freestyle or on a mixtape. So hearing it on an actual album, like on two major albums, by the way, it was ridiculous and just mind blowing to me. I almost thought that they were just stealing the beat. <laughs> Continuing the trend of having his guests take the spotlights, I wonder, brings in Hassan Chop, who drops three really dope verses about people or, or maybe one person that have passed away that he grew up with. He's thought a lot about them, and they clearly meant a lot to him as well. It's an interesting inclusion to this project since it doesn't quite make sense in context of the album, but it's still a very good song. I feel Doom maybe included this song because the way Hassan rapped about these people slash this person reminded him of his brother Subrock and how he felt about his brother. Doom takes things back to his KMD days with the track One Smart N-Word. This track is just, really, again, a bunch of samples that are thrown together to create a dialogue, like we've seen before. However, here he is trying to make a point that black people have been and even now are currently being mistreated and looked down on because of their color of their skin. This is something that Doom has not really strayed away from, but he doesn't talk about as often. So whenever he does make a point to bring this up, it's important to listen, I feel. That about wraps up King Ghidorah's Take Me To Your Leader. Ghidorah would not be heard from too frequently from here on, possibly due to Doom's apparent shot at the Monster Island Czars on the track El Chupa Nibre from his collaborative project with Danger Mouse and the fallout surrounding that, but we'll discuss that in the coming chapters. For now though, let me know what you thought of King Ghidorah, King Ghidorah's Take Me To Your Leader, and what your favorite tracks are on it. Personally, I like I said, I love Antimatter, and that's one of my favorite tracks, really, of all time. It's just a very... F the beat, mostly. The beat is what carries it, and then Mr. Fantastic is just smooth, obviously. But this album is definitely different in terms of Doom's projects. Here, like I mentioned at the top, it's less of Doom directly saying things, because obviously he was only featured on a few tracks, but also because we're meant to think of it as King Ghidorah saying all these things and Doom's just being the translator, essentially. So the way that it's being 
delivered, I guess you could say, is definitely different in nature from what we've come to expect from him. At least if you've only listened to the, I guess, Doom projects, like Operation Doomsday, mm, Food, and Born Like This. But as we're going to see on the next chapter, Vaudeville Villain is going to be similar to an extent. With King Ghidorah, Doom definitely curated an album rather than making his own album, which he could have totally done as well. But with Victor Vaughn, he takes that persona and goes all in. But we'll have to wait till next time to hear more about it. For now, let me know what you thought of Take Me To Your Leader. And if you, again, like every episode, if you were around when it first came out, please let me know what was going on at that time and what your thoughts personally were when it was coming out. Also, remember to like and subscribe if you want to see future episodes of The Book of Doom. This is going to be going on for the rest of the year. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. And that's all I got. Thank you for watching and please stay safe out there.